I think sometimes the scariest things are the unknown. When we heard about the virus, you know, we, we all heard of the dangers and the fears of, of what might happen, but this shocked everybody. And to be honest with you, back in February when you started hearing about it, I mean, wasn't too sure about all of it. Then once it got serious, man, it got scary. And many people, they don't really believe what's going on until something happens to the relatives or somebody they know. One of my sisters, her mother-in-law, he got infected in COVID-19 and, and passed away in like less than 24 hours. Early on in this, I had a good friend that ended up being very sick, so I, I knew it was real. And I, you know, watched him be in intensive care and be in a coma, and, you know, he luckily pulled through it. But, you know, we never knew what to expect. Of course, they canceled the races that day and they shut down. But like everybody else, we didn't know how long. I thought it was going to be a day or two, maybe, tops. And they didn't really start worrying, especially me at my age. I mean, I really started thinking, man, is this going to be it? Is this the way I'm going to go out? When the pandemic hit, everybody immediately thinks of home. And what can I do to protect home? I've been here at Santa Anita for 34 years, and this is as much home to me as my own home. And just like everybody else who wants to keep their family safe, it was really important to keep my family safe here. We got a message from a couple of, you know, some people who were pretty senior in the in medical field, and a couple of other people who said, hey, this thing's getting really bad. Get home as quick as you can and stock up, because this thing's no joke. Got back to San Anita as quick as we could. Started seeing the news then day by day getting worse and realized that, you know, businesses were going to start to be put, put out of business for the time being. But this isn't like any other business, right? The uh, racetracks are it's like a town. 800 people live here, 1,800 horses live here, so it's not like any other business. So that was a realization that we could have a real crisis on our hands and uh, a little bit of panic set in across the group here. I was scared, I'll, I'll be honest. And so we just started to think about all the different scenarios and ramifications that, that were coming. And we were worried that if the jobs went away and the people went away or people didn't feel safe coming here to take care of the animals, that that could result in a serious crisis. And that kept us up at night. I think as soon as the original realization hit everyone that this was not a flu, got a call from our lobbyist in Sacramento and he said, the governor's gonna issue an order that there's no gatherings of more than 250 people. So, you know, we knew we had to be preparing. Our odds were not good. LA County's been really strict and even on this day, Still a majority of the businesses can't operate and no sports are allowed to operate. So at that point it was, what are we gonna do? We gotta make a decision here. We can start to ask animals to leave here and people to start to get out and try and get it to an amount that was controllable or double down and try and get her open as quick as we could. The idea earlier on was, well, look, we've got enough room, why can't people stay here? Then when we looked at it, it was pretty feasible because the actual athletes two sets of athletes, we've got the jockeys and the animals, the vast majority of the athletes are already here and live here along with their carers. So it wasn't kind of so scary at that point. It was like, well, let's see if we can't get the jockeys and fundamentally the other people who operate and put on the show to stay here. And my original idea was like, let's put people in tents on the downhill course. And a few people laughed. We were sourcing a bunch of different options, including tents and, and in even building uh, temporary housing inside the building. We have a one million square foot grandstand. And so we thought, well, we're not gonna use a lot of it for a long time. And so it, would it make sense to space everybody out and build it in there? And then we went and looked at a lot of our V companies and they had rented them all. And so it was a bit of a, an a moment where we had to think outside the box and, and try something new. And luckily my wife reminded me with the movie industry shut down that there's not a lot of film production going on around la so star wagons might be a good option so we reached out to them and they were great we built a small city in a matter of a week in addition to setting them jockeyville there was so many things we had to try and figure out 
When we spoke to LA County, they were very concerned about a few things. I mean, there was a pandemic going on, but they were really concerned about the jockeys leaving, coming back to the track, mixing with other people, and again, going back and forth. So we needed to get testing done. Uh, that wasn't as simple as, uh, as it sounds, you know, not only the trying to convince 100 odd people if they'll let us stick implements up their noses, trying to get them done in a timely manner. But we found a way to get the testing done rather quickly. Uh, we shipped it off. And then by the time we woke up the next morning, we pretty much had the results. So yeah, the way to, to keep everybody safe is to put them in a bubble and having them with zero contact with anybody else other than the group. We weren't sure when we started to talk about it, what percentage of the jockeys would be willing to do it. You know, I think they were skeptical. I certainly had concerns, you know, what's going to happen? Are we going to be close to everybody? Are we going to be piled in the room all together? Is it going to be a little bit scary? I'm thinking I'm going to be stuck in a trailer, you know, 24-7. What you going to do, you know? But no, it's the opposite. It's just a great time with the guys, you know? It's just like uh, being in a man cave. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get my shoes dirty, man. Everyone's tested negative, so it's move-in day. So that's the jockeys, valets, and Aiden and myself. The whole idea with having everybody live together is they're not going out and interacting with people outside our bubble. So we know we're around people that are safe. Brought my pedal. <laughs> well, it's gonna be different, you know. It's, uh, I mean, when you live five minutes away from, from the track and you have to stay on the track, it's, it's gonna be a little weird, but uh, it's not a big deal. They said they're for the movie stars, so uh, that's pretty cool. So they, they take our temperature, and uh, if our temperature is normal and good, they, uh, they give us these wristbands. It wasn't just trailers we got. I mean, this is our backyard. We have the grandstand. We have the track to go running on to lose weight. They've made it a lot of fun. The guys have got very creative with running the track, running up the hillside turf course, all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, try different stuff. I feel a bit boring jogging every day. So I get a good idea. Get a hiking pole and then use you know, a piece of uh, tire here so I can pull brake. Because sometimes I go too fast and I fell a couple of times already, hitting hard. You gotta do what I have to do. We're still at a point where pretty much every other sport is still dark. In your opinion, what does it mean to have racing going? For the community outside of racing, um, it's been something where they could go to and enjoy. It's helped a lot of people through this time. And, uh, you know, I, I know as a, as a jockey, this is our life, and we're sure, we're sure grateful for it. Mario, you're going to go by yourself, 49 change. Let him gallop out by yourself, yep. Beautiful. Everyone's separated, so we'll saddle in the, the receiving barn, and then uh, the groom will lead him over and leg up the jockey, and then the pony's there. So it's really kind of like clockwork, the way they've got it set up. And credit to Sanita has done a great job of just making it happen. What I got for you? When you're feeling down, we just talk to Louis. He, Louis is very understanding. You can tell him all your problems, and he just looks at you like, all right, be all right. Right, Louis? much done with their pre-race prep as far as getting their weight, getting dressed, getting ready for the first race. Right now, most guys are going over, studying the racing form, the horses that they ride throughout the day. If you stay home, there's no money, you know, coming in. Not as, uh, like, NBA player or baseball player, where they sign a contract. Where us, it's like, you win races or not. So it's good to get back uh, in business. I don't think any other racetrack has taken on a project like this. I mean, we, we had to quarantine riders, valets, separate the trainers, and we dedicated a lot of time, talked to a lot of people, a lot of employees, trying to figure out how to get that done. And um, 
We were the first sporting event to open up, I think, in the country, and it's been good. You know, horse racing is fun. It's a tight-knit family, you know, from the hot walkers and grooms all the way up to the management at the track. And now it's like you're just sort of out here alone. You know, it's extremely odd. To look up on our first day when we came back with nobody in the stands. It's been surreal, I think is probably the best word that I can come up with. There's literally nobody here. I think the first couple of races, we were all trying to figure things out. But after everything kind of started falling into place, we all felt good and comfortable after that. And it's gone pretty smooth, other than, again, we, we miss the fans. It's not fun playing uh, any kind of sport without someone cheering for you. Man, that was great. Jump off, man. Every step was beautiful. Yeah, I think you did perfect. Thank you. All right. He did anyway. That's it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. On the regular days, everybody goes back from the last race, and everybody take a shower really fast, and then put their shoes on and run to their wives or to their house or whatever, you know? And now everybody comes in, and it's like, OK, we're not, we're not going nowhere. Ah. Yeah, that, that's. I got the guy out. <laughs> Got a colonoscopy yesterday. It's a bunch of exciting news. Did, 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 you put, did they put you under? Yeah, but you don't even, yeah, like, that's correct. nothing. Uh, really? Yeah, it was great. Sorry. I mean, it wasn't great. It wasn't the best experience I ever had. Yeah, no, colonoscopy. Like colonoscopy, yeah. Colonoscopy, yeah. yeah. Good, he says, yeah. Great. He doesn't know what that is. He's too young. Did he buy you a coffee at least or something? Yeah. It's Aaron Grider's birthday today. He was crossing the wire today, and Mike Smith says, Oh, is that Grider? That's his birthday. Today's his birthday. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's so nice. He was like 10 to 1 or so. You don't expect him to win. And then, you know, things like this happen. Happy Knowing that we're going to be here 24 7. We wanted to keep the guys entertained. So, part of that was to come up with some different games. We did karaoke, poker, movie night. You know, it's all part just making it a fun experience so that they want to come back. And I haven't hung out with these guys in 10 years. I mean, we ride together, we, we work together, but then after that, we go home. It's the first first time that we get to hang out as friends. If you're gonna have to do something like this, this is the way to do it. I would like to say life in quarantine is pretty tough, but I'd be lying like crazy. Yeah, we've got two groups. We've got the guys who love to donate money to me playing poker, and then the uh, I want to be in a boy band group. But yeah, it's funny, you give somebody a mic, and uh, in this case, they won't let it go. <laughs> I think people actually pay a lot of money to go on vacation and do the things that we're blessed to do right now. And if, you, if you're ever around here, especially at night, now that you get to sit up here and, and, and play cars or eat dinner, I mean, they work 24-7. They never stop. I mean, they're going around at midnight, just making sure that every part of the racetrack is the same depth and, and that everything is safe as possible. Last year, we had some horse injuries, quite a few of them. And that started saying, like, well, what's going on? What are we doing out there? Why is this the case? So I came out with the corporate group to say, all right, what can we do better here? Um, what can the industry do better? What can the sport do better? Because not just from a, from a company standpoint, but from a human standpoint, we all, we all love the horses. And, and 
we can't do this well. Like we don't, we shouldn't be doing it. So we spent a heck of a lot of time and rebuilt a team specifically to address safety on the racetrack. As you can see, we move the rail, you know, so we're always on good ground. And when the ground is bad, it's not even really bad. It's barely tiny divots, but it's, it's good. You can feel how good it is, you know, it's got a little give in it. There's percentages in a science to how it has to all be measured out to make it, you know, to the level of safety that they're looking for. So, yeah, it's a lot behind it. It's not just driving a tractor around with the water truck following you. It's amazing, like, when you just jump on the horse, you came into the track in the early morning, and you got this sunrise over the mountain with all these colors of the sky. It's something, it's, I mean, you wake up for something, and you say, well, that's, that's what I want to do. That's my job. I've been fortunate throughout my career of racing that I've been all around the world and seen some of the most beautiful racetracks. But when I come back to Santa Anita, I don't think there's one that is more beautiful than this. Every racetrack's unique and you, you see something in it that's very special. But when you can sit here and be in the grandstand and you've got the San Gabriel Mountains behind you, it's just, it's unbelievable. You know, you just, you look at it and you feel like you could touch the mountain. Then you can come back here and see a couple bronzes of, of some of the Hall of Fame jockeys that have ridden here in the past. You know, you've got some bronze statues of some of the great horses that have been here. This is history, and Santa Anita is a big part of the history of horse racing. Well, we're in, you know, very unique times, not just in sports, but in life. You know, racing's been around for hundreds of years, and it's always found a way, and it's not the first time there's been struggles in racing. And it seems like one way or another, because the strong family of people that love these horses worldwide, we find a way to battle through anything. This is the last weekend here, so I'm excited. Oh, we ride those two horses today for Neil. I know. And the last, I like your horse, it's nice too. I like mine too. Yeah, he can run. I mean, usually you are in the drugs room and it's a lot about competition, so you don't know much about each other. No, it's, you see different side of people. It's better. When you stay with all jockeys all the weeks, three days a week, it's, it's really, yeah. Now it's better, the, the relationship with all the jockeys here, it's really better. It's funny, I was talking to other racetracks. Uh, they were asking how we did it and what we did. And when you start explaining it to someone, it, it was quite an endeavor and uh, we pulled it off and it makes me feel good. And I feel good that all of our horsemen, all of our employees, everyone responded well to it and uh, it's working. You know, this is a, a community and I don't want to sound trite, but you know, a lot of these people are family to each other. They've been working together for many, many years. and. You know, uh, we were lucky to get reopened when we did. So people did a tremendous job. You know, with, with no sports right now and, and us being able to come back, it's funny how things will work out. You know, you go from one minute thinking this pandemic's gonna ruin our game, gonna take it away, and somehow in some way, it's kind of lifted it back up and got us going again. Probably in, in my lifetime in horse racing, I've never seen a time where every aspect of the industry came together to solve a problem and make it work. They had to work overtime to get us open back up. So I think I think racing should stand up and be very proud of what we do. Let's face it, we were making it up as we went along, and we proved it worked. And not only did we prove it worked, we proved it worked week after week after week after week. And there was an awful lot of pride there. We kept people employed. We kept the horses safe. We kept the riders safe. We kept the community safe. So hell yeah, it was worth it. Hell yeah, it was worth it. When we thought about putting the quarantine together, first and foremost, it was we had to prove we could keep you guys safe. Turns out when we were putting the rules together, 
the safest environment for all of COVID was in a family unit. So we decided we'd try and make it into like a, feel like a family. And I think we accomplished that. I think we're at this stage, all of us feel uh, that. Yeah, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Some people ain't wanting to leave exactly. Um, this is six weeks where we all stayed safe. So I just want to say from San Anita, from myself, Nate, Jody, the whole team, um, proud to have you all as friends and call you friends. And uh, what you do every day is amazing. You're some of the best athletes in the world. And I'm, uh, I'm pumped that I got, for a small time in the, in the history of life, I got to hang out with my family. So we, me and Nate and the team bought you all a little gift. It's nothing that special, but it's over on that table, so go grab it. Thank you guys very much.